Hi, I'm Chad Fair. And I'm Alex Rodriguez. And this is Nerd Java, your daily dose of everything movies, television, and gaming. And today we're going to be dis discussing the new Marvel movie, Thor, God of Thunder. What'd you think? I thought overall it was pretty good. Okay. I, it was very enjoyable. I had a great time. As you could say, it was a fun movie, kind of yeah. like uh, Ragnarok. Um, wasn't the best Thor, and it wasn't the best Marvel movie. If I had to rank it anywhere, I'd probably put it like right in the middle somewhere. But I thought overall it was super fun. Um, it just seemed a little bit repetitive, a little bit as far as like, uh, you know, I think Kevin Feige was just like, uh, hey guys, uh, Ragnarok was amazing. Let's just, <laughs> let's just do that again. You know, give us the same thing. Definitely. Let's not change it up and let's just get another... Well, I, I think that's the thing is, if, if you enjoyed Ragnarok, I think you would enjoy this movie. One hundred percent. It's, it's yeah. Thor being funny, yes. um, which the first two Thor movies not funny. It it started kind of in Infinity War when he became mm -hmm. started to become a little bit funny and he discovered, hey, you can be funny, and then the new director took him in that direction, right. and it was good. I, I enjoyed the humor of it. Yeah, I laughed way more in this than I probably should have. Um, the screaming goats. I don't know screaming why. Screaming goats, Ross. Uh, yeah, I have no idea why, but. Just every time, the, ah, ah! That was just a, like, such an obnoxious <laughs> yell that it was yes. just, how could you not laugh at it? It's like, it was just ridiculous. You know, yeah. it was just so over the top. But again, I thought that part played well. And I just loved how, you know, that alien race, they were trying to give it away. And, yes. and Thor was like, oh, they're so bring beautiful. Yeah, bring oh, them, they're bring majestic them. looking. Oh, yeah, come on, bring them in. <laughs> By the way, there might be some spoiler alerts in here. So just in case you haven't seen it, you might want to watch it before you uh, go any further. Go any yes. further than this. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot to like about this movie as far as the humor and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. The, the things that I really did not care for, though, mm -hmm. like Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth, that chemistry is gone. I could have totally yeah. done without the Jane Foster storyline. Yeah. I feel like they forced her into her a little bit. Yes. I mean, even at one point, I think she didn't even want to do uh, Jane Foster anymore, nope. right? I mean, nope. that was the whole deal, and then now they brought her back, obviously, because of the success of Infinity War and right. Endgame. She's like... It just but, didn't work. Yeah, I feel you. I, I, yeah. I agree. I mean, it's nice to see that familiar face. I do mm -hmm. like continuity. Yeah. As far as characters, you know, like... Well, I wouldn't want them to bring in, like, a different love interest. Yeah, I mean, like... like good. Oh, yeah. yeah, with Batman Begins and, you know, uh, <laughs> Dark Knight, and you know, they switched them, like... Right. Uh, um, like Kitty Holmes, I thought Kitty Holmes was great, and then they. Brought, I mean, I like Maggie Gyllenhaal too, but I mean, yeah, you know, no, I get it. And I, I get digress. No, I you know, <laughs> but, I mean, I think the thing that I would have liked to see them do though is spend that time they all spent trying to develop the Jane Foster storyline mm. and put that behind the God Butcher. Oh man, the best yeah. part of this whole movie, in my opinion, yeah. was Christian Bale. Oh, one hundred percent, one of the best villains and villains in the MCU universe by overall. far. Oh, I mean, he was just yeah. so. I mean, and that just shows you what type, like how a great actor can really just make your film so much better, you know, because yes. he really played that part to a T. I mean, it was one of the creepiest characters. Like, oh my like, goodness, like yes. The Shadow Monster, like that part where he's in the cage with the kids and he just, they're telling the Thor story and he just pops out in the back yes. and like, dude, that was great. Like that, that was probably one of my favorite scenes. You know? it, it literally felt like he was a horror character. Yeah. And that was so cool to me. I would have loved yeah. to see them spend time in his backstory more. Yeah. And really developed him. Because whenever you start thinking about him, you actually can kind of sympathize with why he became a bad guy. Exactly. And I yeah. love any time that they can create a bad guy yeah. that you kind of feel for. Like Thanos, you can never really get behind Thanos going, well, I guess you, some folks are like, yeah, kill off half the population. I'm good with that. But I mean, it's, it's, it's not one of those relatable things. Yeah. Whereas like this guy legitimately felt like let down by the gods. Yeah, and that's like I think one of the overall kind of story or more of the stories of the, of the movie, which I actually really like that maybe a lot of, kind of might have passed over a lot of people's heads. It's just like, you know, can gods really love or do they really care about their mm -hmm. people? You know, like they always say, well, you know, if there was really a God, then why does he let good things happen or bad, bad things, things happen, happen to, to good people, people yeah. right? And it's one of those things where, you know, Christian Bell and, or at least Gore, uh, they were, you know, praying to the God of, of, of lights, of the sun, and it was the sun that was killing them and yep. he just let them down, you know? And like you could tell when he went to that oasis that the God really didn't care about him. He's like, oh, oh, it's one of my followers, you know? Right. It's like he just didn't care, you know? So, yeah. um, I thought it was an overall theme that kind of went on, even with Thor and um, 
you know, destroying the palace and yeah. really being completely reckless and not caring. I mean, it just, uh, you know, it really gets us to think, you know, can he love? And mm -hmm. it also goes back to Jane's character. It's like, mm -hmm. can he make a relationship go? Because how could a god love a human? And, mm -hmm. you know, so it was just one of those kind of overall themes that I did like about the movie. Yeah, and you know? that, was, that was a really great theme that was going on. There were mm -hmm. some other things that I found really interesting mm -hmm. that... It was funny, but as we've talked about before, like they they took it a little too far, uh, and that oh, was the like jokes, yeah. th some of the jokes, right? Yeah. Especially the relationship between him, the hammer, and him and the axe, <laughs> uh, which was great. I loved that guy. It was funny. I really got. But you know, I thought it was just it just dragged on a little too much. You can only go to the well you so know? many times. Yeah, I mean, you can only yeah. you know, it's like a magic trick. You can only fool someone. You can only fool them once, you right. know? Um, I loved it, though. Uh, I thought they just went, there were just one too many jokes, but mm -hmm. I thought it was great. I was laughing the first couple times. Totally. They lost me in the last one, but um, you know, yes. a little tickling in the beard. I mean, come on, yeah. I could have done without it. But you see, this is another opportunity. of If they hadn't brought in the Jane Foster character, they could have introduced somebody who they did an Easter egg with in Ragnarok, mm -hmm. and that's Beta Ray Bill. Right, yeah. For anybody who doesn't know who Beta Ray Bill is. So Beta Ray Bill is in the Thor comics. And he's actually the true owner of Stormbreaker. This was a great opportunity for them to finally get rid of Stormbreaker mm -hmm. and give Thor his hammer back. Because that's his main weapon. That's what he always uses. Yeah. Could have got that back to him. Gave, gave him a chance to get rid of his current love interest, quote unquote, uh, Stormbreaker, mm -hmm. and move on. And they just totally missed an opportunity for that for me. Yeah, I totally see that. I, totally <laughs> see that. I mean, I didn't mind the Mighty Thor um, storyline with Jane yeah. Foster. I thought it was great. Um, there was a lot of awesome moments with the Thor, with the hammer. I loved how it broke into pieces, went out, oh my gosh, yeah, killed everybody, and then came back and like rejoined. I thought that was like pretty see, awesome. And that's too. one of those things that like if you're still watching the Marvel movies at this point, you've completely disconnected <laughs> themselves from the comic books. You can't be diehard with the comics mm -hmm. and expect it to translate over to the movies because it's just not going to happen. Yeah, and we saw that more with this movie because. Thor started having powers that he never had before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another quick spoiler alert for anybody that's watching. He gives his powers to these little kids. Yeah. I shouldn't have found it as amusing as I did, but I thought that was actually a lot of fun. And that little girl with her stuffed animal. Yeah. That was like head laser eyes, ah, with a little yeah. tiny like stuffed bunny, I think it was, or a teddy yeah. bear. That to me was actually really funny. It was fun. Uh, I enjoyed but it. it's fun, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing with this movie. It, it's not a movie that really is going to be a deep thinking movie. It's not to the um, the horror level that they were trying to go to with um, Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it actually accomplished more as far as for the fans. It was it's a much more enjoyable watch without you having to like have this mind trip going on. I did think that part with the kids, I thought that was fun. Uh, it was cheesy, but it was It, fun. Was, cheesy, it was cheesy, of course. I mean, but then I, there's also the question of like, well, if he could do that, why didn't he do that in Infinity War? You know, like, why yes. didn't he do that in other things? Just give everybody Thor's power, then they wouldn't really have any issues. Or right, they would have taken him down really easy. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a lot easier. Obviously, that would have been, there would have been that much of a movie, but I mean... <laughs> Why didn't he do that before? You yes. Know? So that was the only question. But it was fun. Uh, I thought the introduction of Heimdall's uh, son was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the way, oh, what's the, what's the, uh, the Rock's name? The, the, oh, the oh, guy. I can't remember his name, but I know, yeah. And now he just became, yeah. I, I love that part at the end where he's like, oh, yeah, and then Heimdall's son did that freaky eye thing. Like the way like he was narrating. Well, he was the narrator the of the story. Yeah, yeah it was great. Really it was funny. great. In the beginning, I thought it was a little... Uh, there was a couple of moments that I thought it was a little over the top, but yeah. towards the end, like I, I just I got it. it. Yeah. I, I started to get it at the end. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. So I, I enjoyed that. If I'm looking at the whole like Marvel continuum of movies, um, once we got past fate, like to start a Phase Four, mm. this is probably my second favorite movie in Phase Four. So okay. Shang Chi is by far my favorite so oh, far yeah. of the new of the new series. 100%. Um, but I, I like this more than the Spider-Man movie, the Doctor Strange movie, uh, definitely Eternals. That was garbage. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. But, so, I mean, it's like my, it's, it's up there. I think it's an enjoyable watch. Anybody Very who enjoyable. likes the Marvel movies that's still hanging with them, I'd say definitely mm -hmm. give this one a look. You know, catching the serious story with Jane, Jane Foster's cancer and then mm -hmm. going to the comedic side and then kind of just being able to balance both of those. I thought it did a great job. And the comedy was there. The action was great. So, I would say four out of five cups. I don't give high ratings very... Frequently, mm -hmm. I'd probably go more in the three and a half okay. cups with this. It was enjoyable. I'd go back and watch it again. I'm going to go back and watch it again because it was a fun movie. All right. Sounds good. Well, there you go, guys. If you want to watch uh, Thor 
Love and, Love and Thunder. Thunder. Yes. It is out in theaters right now, and you can go ahead and go watch it. Let us know what you think. Yeah, and before you let exit out of this video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up and click the subscribe. Subscribe up. It's probably up here somewhere. It's probably up here somewhere. Uh, and also, be sure if you like this review, let us know. If you disagree with anything we had to say, put it in the comments below and we will respond. Yeah, 100%. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Let us yes. know if you think we are just full of crap or if you you know you agree with us on certain <laughs> things and again we love to know your opinions that way we can touch base and also let us know what other movies you'd like us for for us to review in the yep. future as well all right see you next time on nerd java stay classy hey y'all my name is chad fair and i'm one of the hosts of nerd java are you an independent or large studio movie or tv producer we would love to review your work please reach out to us at this email right here and we'll get back in touch with you also be sure to like and subscribe before we take off from our video there's a lot more nerd Java coming your way.